parts ground and life out of death. Bless us as this life grows, and send sorrow and sighing to flee away. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. Transform the lives of all who suffer with your wonders near at hand. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has come upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has come upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has come upon you. first letter. 
letter to the Thessalonians. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May that very God of peace sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. The word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. Cheer 
that American yoga culture often seems to bring with it. It is not actually that unlike the kind of corporate holiday season. In a yoga class, you are praised for taking time for yourself. You are told good vibes only. What about my angry vibes? <laughs> what about my annoyed, and tired, and negative? What about all of those? What about uneasiness? What about the apparent collapse of hope for international peace? What about another instance of senseless violence or cancer or hate crimes? How can we possibly focus on what is positive? So by day three of my time there, I had mellowed a little, and as often does when we pause long enough to listen, there was this kind of question that popped up in the back of my mind. All right, you could be frustrated at things that seem overly sentimental, but how does your outrage help anyone who is suffering anywhere? How do your unsettled feelings help struggle in relationships or in the world? And that bottom line, kind of harsh question, who is served by your inner turmoil? No one. No one is served by that. And today on this third Sunday of Advent, we have our pink candle, we're told rejoice, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, and I think the correlative invitation is to question all of the things that make it impossible for us to do that. Softly question that anxiety and fear and turmoil. In the same way that love is the only thing that can overcome hatred, trying to force yourself into feeling anything will only backfire. Instead, we're invited in our epistle, I think, to turn toward something new with gentleness, acknowledging the reality of the feelings that are already there, all of that fear and anger and unsettledness. You're not trying to correct your feelings by force. But I think the invitation that our faith offers is to ask God to come with us into those places. That, after all, is the whole point of Christmas, that Jesus Christ as a child is born, that God is born into all of those places of fear and anger. Listen to this. This is from Augustine, who was one of Luther's kind of big theological talking partners. He wrote in the year 395 in North Africa. This is what he says about Praying without ceasing, another one of those things in this list that seems like kind of a tall order. He says, your desire itself is your prayer. And if your desire is continuous, so is your prayer. It was not without reason that the apostle said, pray without ceasing. We cannot be constantly genuflecting or prostrating ourselves or lifting our hands, can we? It is not with reference to such actions as these that we can speak of praying without ceasing. There is, however, another prayer that is really ceaseless. It is interior and consists in desire. If you do not wish to leave of praying, then do not leave off desiring. Praying all of the time doesn't have to look like being in this building or having our hands folded quietly. Do not leave off desiring. Imagine prayer not just as a technical recitation of creeds or a wish list of things that we hope to happen. For what should we pray? How do we do this work of desiring God's reality? How do we want what God wants? How do we, as Augustine would have put it, how do we get our desires in order? Well, listen, listen to this thing that the prophet Isaiah said. It may sound familiar from somewhere. The Lord has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and so on. We've heard that whole section from the prophet Isaiah in our Hebrew Scriptures Old Testament reading this morning. Well, you may have heard it somewhere else as well, because that is exactly what Jesus said 
when he began his ministry in the Gospel of Luke. His first, his first public proclamation in the Gospel, he stands up in the synagogue and he reads this exact text from Isaiah, this text that John the Baptist also quotes, and says, today this is fulfilled in your hearing. This has happened. In Christ, good news for the oppressed. In Christ is liberty to captives, comfort for the morning, the strength of praise instead of weakness. These are the things we are called to want. This is what we are called to pray for. Now, as Christians, but there is certainly some paradox, right, of praying for one who is to come, who has come, who will come again. But the invitation is to see that how we align ourselves with these things that Jesus is, Jesus has created. We are called, in this sense, to align our life, the things that we want, the things that we think about, into God's agenda rather than just our own. And one of the ways we do that is to interrogate a little bit, interrogate those things that bring us away from these desires. This is not to undercut the very real and unrejoice-worthy things that happen in our lives, but it's to take it as an opportunity to recognize that Jesus Christ is already in those places, that we can lean toward God in the grief. We can lean toward God in the fear. We can lean toward God even in our anger, not denying them, but finding that that is the exact place where we find our Savior in whom we rejoice. These last days of Advent, listen for the one who calls, find gratitude and joy in what is good, and know that even in the places where that is difficult, that God is there with you already. Amen.
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and they became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and de deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts and oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. We pray for those who have asked us to do so, remembering Art, Mary Rose, Charlotte, Brandon, Alice, Lorraine, Andrea, Judy, Ruth, Tim, Jim, Stephen, Sue, Isaac, Bruce, Tommy, Sandy, Jeff, Eddie, Ed, Eric, Rita, Justin, Carla, Lori, Mark, Norma, Glenn, Tony, Carl, Gretchen, Megan, Ellen, Donna, Ron, Linda, David, Mike, Marsha, Marvin, Emily, Ryan, Kathy, Dan, Claire, Kenny, Sue, Carol, Joyce, Chuck, Patty, Diane, Gretchen, Hank, Anna, Pastor Keith, and Pastor Janet, Margaret and Robert, Jeanette and Bruce, Renee and Greg, Paula and Dave, Lynn and her family, Baby Greenlee and her parents, Riley and her family, those who travel, those who serve in the military, and all those who seek the comfort of God's love, who we name now either silently or not. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With 
gratitude we rejoice in the saints who witnessed in your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessed to these and all our prayers and God hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Please be seated. You'll find the whole uh, Christmas holiday schedule in your bulletin, notably today. Uh, Lessons and Carols is at Old St. Luke's this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Also at Old St. Luke's, it's a really neat historic um, church building, it's just on the line with Scott Township, is our Christmas Day service. Uh, we're doing it jointly with St. Paul's Mount Lebanon. It's going to be a mix of Episcopal and Lutheran liturgy, which are pretty much the same anyway. Um, I'm going to be preaching. It's going to be delightful. Um, also note that this year our Christmas Eve service is 7 and 9. At 7 o'clock we'll have our Christmas pageant, and at 9 o'clock the traditional Lessons and Carols for Communion. Please um, sign up to be a prayer pal for uh, next year. There's a box in the forms or right here in the side narthex. Those names won't be chosen until January. So for now, just write your name um, and your information on the sheet and put it in the box. Every, um, if you need it to be brought to your seat, we will absolutely do that as well. Everyone who's baptized from any tradition is welcome to receive. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
but our provider. By your merciful hand, all our good spreads out from the earth. Receive the blessings and gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all of you. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you make all things new, in the day when he comes to reconcile the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body of Christ here for you. Anointing of the Holy Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 